Hello there, and welcome to episode 4 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six, version 61. I'm Icon, and today we're kind of at a crossroads. So, on the last couple of episodes, I've set up the basics for this little city to work, and now there's lots of different things we could dive into at the same time. Because that this doesn't work in terms of explanations, I'll have to do some decisions. The first thing that I want to talk about in this episode today is expansion of the city and city planning. And after that, my plan is to install ourselves a first bakery to show you the procedure of, of more advanced refining things. So that's the rough roadmap for this episode. So let's get started. Now, we've built up a little bit of a village here. I can hardly call it a city because it's really just a couple of shacks around an acre, that's that. But we can utilize that to build ourselves a real city. I always like to go in my planning to check out where certain sectors of my industry will be living at at some point. Right now we're sitting here. It's clearly visible that we can produce lots of wood here or we could either go with our wood production towards here. It's up to us. All in all, this basin here looks really cool to my for my taste, because attackers will always have to worry about the waters here, and at some point in the far, far future, we could build bridges and expand all the way up here and grab that land. So our first plan now will be to expand our city on the lower half of the, of the map. We'll see about further expansions one day in the far future. Now, with that being said, that's the first decision. You should always consider way, where do you want your city growing at first. You can hardly take over the whole map at once, so you've got to have to start somewhere. The next thing I love to do is turn on the fertility table here and check out where the fertility is especially high. Over here we see a very bright spot going lower here, so all in all this area seems to be quite nice, but sadly there's also a lot of water here taking up a large spot of the fertile soil there. I'm quite sad that fertility is not displayed at this layer of the map. I'd be happy if that would be changed in future versions, but for now it is as it is. So we could also go agriculture-wise a little bit over the river, there's also good zones here, so if we check out the other direction towards the forests, it's looking really bad. So there's really no good soil over here, and if we go up ahead north, you see that it doesn't really get much better there. So this is definitely going to be the granary of our little city. So whatever we do, this entire sector here all the plains in and around the river will be reserved for food production in one way or another. So we already know where our city will, will grow its uh, grains at. So if we go down here, let's turn off the fertility and turn on the deficits. If we go down here, we see all the different de uh, deposits our colony or our city has. They are marked here with the, right, with the red borders, and you can deactivate or activate it with this button up there. Now, here you see stone deposits. It's the same, it's the same meaning here. The more bright the cyan color is, the higher the density of the deposit. If your deposits look too much like this here, it's hardly worth digging it out. You're going to have a extremely low deposit density there, and your miners will have a hot time extracting anything there. When you check out for something like that, here we have gemstone. This is also a very, very bad density, but since it's gemstone, since it's very valuable, you would be also happy with lower densities. But with materials like stone, coal, or ore, don't settle with really small deposits like these. Nah, -uh. you won't make yourself happy. So this means what we're seeing here, our map does not really offer us any larger deposits of ore or coal. There's nothing around here. The deposits here are really meager. 
This one here will hardly bring us through anything, and I've seen one deposit of ore down here, and uh, beyond that I haven't really found anything. So this means our city will have to import its ore. That's pretty usual. You know, there's always going to be a couple of resources that you won't be able to produce by yourself locally. So we're going to have to refine ore into metal later down the road as well. But I want to start out with bread today because bread will not only give us more food, not that we need that much more food right now, but most importantly, our human populace loves bread. So if we provide bread, we'll have more immigrants because all bread is the talk of the town and people will come for that. So, that means we'll have some stone production nevertheless here. These two deposits look like they're really feasible for some mining action. The third one here could be also and some could be also brought up at some point in the far future. Whatever might be the case, this means this area here, where we're right now living at, should be later our mining and refining area because stone can be refined into cut stone and I'd like to do that here so the logistics ways are not that far. So that means we're going to have artisans here. Also I see all the wood uh, growing here and that makes me think we're going to go for wood production and refining also in this sector because I mean we're already here, why stop here? So this means our entire production and stuff will be happening here. So now we must ask ourselves for the third and the last question, where will our people live at? Because you know, we have now defined where our people will work at, where we will grow our food, and where we will produce our things. So in this scenario right now, it's kind of a tricky question because we've got a lot of fertile soil around here and going down there I also see some spatches of fertile soil but I think all in all this down here will be the first will be the city core for now like my thought there is a simple one for now it's a pretty protected site where we can set up all the buildings we need and later down the road this will be a really nice area to build something like a palace or, or the like while expanding the city down here into the vast sprawls of the plains where all the citizens and the lower born people can live at. So that's a pretty important thing to make for pretty much all of your playthroughs. You don't need to do that right when you start out, that's not really necessary. Often I just play the map a bit and see around and look around where where's what, but I really strongly recommend you to do this this rough planning at least that I did here for yourself to make sure that you know which direction you'll be working towards to that's a really uh, it's a really helpful thing this way you'll always know where your new buildings will grow at so that means we're going to have to do a lot of things first off the agriculture down here will be a thing of the past in the far future the next thing that i want to put put up let's put on game speed again are roads so roads have been mentioned in the comment section below already i haven't used them yet because i didn't want to bring up too many new things and i felt like roads are a perfect thing for today's topic now roads make your people move faster people will look to move most of the of their route via roads so you do yourself a big favor while building those you can also put on the overlay for path usage and this way you can actually find out where your people will need roads the most or if roads that are you that you are using are not really useful at all it's a very useful overlay so the other roads that you can build are of course more powerful and they cost material as well it's worth mentioning that the stone road is just for a good move speed and the dire road is in, is emitting dread there are two ways to to go and over your people with dread and without dread we'll talk about that in another episode but all in all it's worth knowing that there's the dire road for dread 
and there's the fancy road for all. As you see here, the fancy road is way more costly, but move speed wise, they don't differ at all. It's really easy said dirt roads whenever you don't have any material to work with, stone roads when you have the stone and you want more effective roads, fancy or dire roads when you want to amp up the efficiency of these things. So, beyond that, it's really just a drag and drop issue. You know, you just place down the work order by a drag and drop and that's all you have to do with the dirt roads it's especially good because you don't have to do anything for them except for placing down the command so i'm now setting up a road all the way up ahead here so this will be something for me to work with as well basically let's check out the fertility overlay here one more time basically everything above the road will be will be now agriculture and everything below the road will be city so this way we're still losing a bit of the fertile soil but i can't change it for now i hope we'll be fine with that but since we have so much usable water we'll be also able to go quite big into fishery at least that's what i hope on the long run so for now we're just going to pick up all the immigrants that want to join us because we really need them because we're now planning big things so I'm also quite bothered with the fact that we're still sitting on that measly peasly warehouse here with only a couple of crates. Since we now know where we want to put up our stuff, we're now able to work better than that. So since I now know that my agricultural center will be sitting here, let's just put up a bigger warehouse at the roadside where we're going to work with in the future. Because I really am sick and tired of that. Also, I have configured the, the camera's position in a way that it doesn't cover up this stuff here. So, somebody mentioned that and let me know if it's now working out decently or there was another problem that I didn't see. Let me know. Alright, now, warehouse. When you're building up a warehouse, a larger warehouse, not a tutorial warehouse like the one we built in the first episode, you really got to be asking yourself what do you want it for and how large should it be when it comes down to materials you can choose between wood stone and and, and cut stone 90 percent of the time you will be okay with wood there's also your populace has a preference for certain materials Every race has certain preferences. As you see here with the humans, they don't care about it's uh, about the fact whether it's stone or, or wood. They do care about grand buildings, but as you see here, all the other species have different approaches. If you're building some house for the canters, it shouldn't be wood at all, and so on and so forth. For our race, it's quite easy. We now know that we can choose as we want to. I haven't found real differences between the building materials as of yet, but I'm sure there are some. Feel free to drop me a comment if you know more about the real differences between stone and wood in in terms of factors beyond the preference of your citizens. Now, let's set up the warehouse and let's make it large. So I'm going to put up a nice little block there because as has been mentioned in the in this comment section as well bigger is better if you have the necessary material and the workforce you're always well off with building large buildings because you can always fill their interior later you don't need to fill it right away Oops. so it's really worth putting up larger things right from the get-go so you can just expand later on and as you see here this is a quite nasty game of placing pillars but it's really important to do so there we go now we have this room and now we're going to fill it with crates as hard as possible since i plan to make this a large project of mine we're going to latch in a lot of storage containers here as you see here material wise this is going to be a quite heavy bill but this is okay this is a long-term project 
And since we have now the basics down, we can afford to, to go down with our first long-term project. And since this is going also going to be the center of our city's um, food intake, we're going to need that. So there's plenty of room for optimization here. We could place in a lot of extra crates. I'll leave it like that and accept that. I didn't plan to maximize that thing uh, fully, so there we go. Now, let's pick up as many idle workers as we can. And now let's pick up the clear all command. And here we're just going to slam that over this. So we're going to collect building materials. So there's another... Now, well, I'm going to show that at another time. So for now, we have enough workers to get the job done. And as you see here, there's more and more immigration happening for our city. That's mostly because we have so many services available that people come from far away and they want to see what's up and uh, what's up and going here. So, since I have also planned to create some bread here, we're going to hold down the right mouse button. And while you hold down the right mouse button, you see that you get a display of all the of all the deposits. You can also see wild uh, veggie growing like that when you zoom out and the green borders are wild edibles. What we're looking for now is a starter colony for our for the grain, because we need grain at some point. So we're going to harvest wild edibles. If you just select that, you also get the layout. And we're going to harvest some grain here. Boom. And we're now, knowing what we're knowing, going to set up a large little farm over there. And we're going to place it down, well, where am I going to place it down? Put it down behind the warehouse. And as you see here, when you move your grid, at some point it'll turn red. You see it down there? That's when you've hit the maximum size. There is a maximum size in this game. And when it comes down to farms, I highly recommend you to put down maximum sized fields. This will take a while until you have the grain together. That's why we're not going to do it as of yet. We're only going to put up a small, a small starter uh, field of grain. But I w just wanted to mention that these small acres, they aren't really that worth it. Because all in all, you can always decide to not fully man a farm if you don't want to have that much workforce allocated to it just like i'm doing it here and it's just the the most room efficient way of getting agriculture done if you have the starter good available just do yourself a favor and build a huge farm so for example every upcoming fruit farm will be a maximum sized one because I have the starter already there and there's literally no reason not to because right now our numbers are small but later down the road 30 workers for a farm that's not much uh, and a, a, a single mine will easily host 100 to 150 people later down the road so we'll have to think in larger dimensions for the for the upcoming chapters of this game so now, this is a larger project. As you see here, progress is being made rather slowly. We have 10 odd jobbers, so we're getting the job done quite decently. But there's still a lot of material to be acquired. And that road that I have put up there, it's a pretty big and large project. As you see here, when you put up roads, you automatically get the road usage uh, overlay enabled as well. So just wanted to highlight it so you know what these little lines are trying to tell you so i'm going to put up some roads here extra because why not you know there's a there's some places that need connection and i feel like why not do so it also adds up some into some nice look and flair to your city the more roads you build the more organized your build your city will look like and like I said, your subjects move faster on these roads, so it's definitely worth it. There we go. 
So this warehouse there will be our huge granary and therefore we're going to store first and foremostly our foodstuffs in there. Since we've already decided that the artisan's district is going to lie somewhere around here, we're going to have to consider putting up another warehouse there as well, because we will have to organize our 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 material throughputs. Right now the numbers are all just so small, but knowing what I'm knowing, it's really worth it to scale up way before you need it. This way you don't uh, have to hassle around later, but it really doesn't matter if you don't uh, plan too large early on. You can adjust everything. Every single one of these buildings, by the way, can be reused for another thing. So basically I could rip out all the interiors of the eatery and create a dormitory out of that or a lavatory or whatever. And every one of these buildings can also be expanded afterwards. So a constructed building has its use, even if it doesn't have use right immediately for you. That's all I'm trying to say. So with all the workers I got, we're going to set up, I think it was a six-man job here on the farm. Let's uh, put up the workers for that again. And in the comment section there has been a really, really nice and helpful comment towards woodcutters. So I'm using woodcutters here, but it has been a very smart implication where somebody said the woodcutter is a lie. You'd rather be using the fell tree order and get way better returns, and that's absolutely right. The productivity of an odd jobber versus the productivity of a woodcutter, it's uh, simply no comparison. But the woodcutter is way to go if you want to have an automated income, whereas felling of trees is something that you have to put up every time, unless there's a trick I don't know of. Let me know if there is a trick I don't know of. So, long story short, if you really need wood desperately, you're always better off with using woodcutters for from the, uh, you're better off using odd jobbers doing the woodcutting. And if you need a steady and continuous income of wood for the carpenters and the scroll makers, the woodcutter is the more comfy solution. But if you need large material amounts quickly, you're always well, uh, well off with just collecting that with odd jobbers. Just wanted to say. So unhappiness is spreading, and as you see here, we're not getting any further immigrants in. And I want to showcase a little bit before we go to deeper into that mechanics. So you see here, there's a steady drop in services. That means probably we'll ha we have not enough services for the amount of people we have here. So let's check it out. Our eatery is okay, the dormitory is okay, the lavatory is okay. So, we can't see it here. You can't dig deeper into the menus there. So when you go there, you can have a readout about what's bugging the most. So, here we see we don't have a full capacity of beds. We don't have a full capacity of meals. So these things bug them a lot. But we also have no hearth. I don't know why I have overlooked that. And thanks for uh, pointing that out as well. The hearth is one of the easiest early game uh, service buildings that you can put up and it's a little bit, um, I'm a little bit sad that it slipped my attention like that. It's the winter time um, spot to be at and it's making people happy. All it needs is a little bit of wood that gets fired there and over the winter people will protect themselves from freezing to death. That's a pretty nifty thing and I'm sorry I left that out. Here's the hearth, and as you see here, we will now see a raise in happiness towards services again. And that's a little bit how you can read out these meters. Don't worry, I will dedicate an entire episode or more for reading out how, how these meters work, but I felt like it's a nice moment to get slowly into this topic and get ourselves accustomed to that. So we found, we've, uh, we've got ourselves a grain farm founded. And after that's been done, I really like to go for remove, here, the removal order. 
because, or wait a sec, no, that's the wrong one. Delete jobs, that's what I'm looking for. I always keep confused with that. Because I don't want a continuous, uh, a continuous blocking of that brain. We don't need that. We now have our start starter income, and from that on, we're going to work ourselves forward. But I think that's uh, not really going to happen in this episode. So we're going to set up this warehouse here. And as you see here, now we're... We have everything set up according to plan. The next thing we want to do is set up another big warehouse over here as soon as we know where, which I don't know yet, and get the artisan's district going in that regard. But as soon as this thing is going, we're going to configure it. Because every warehouse will need an individual configuration. You can't change it, it's a, it's a necessary evil. I can't put it into different words. So here we go. Using the 250 times speed mode is really awesome for stuff like that. And like I mentioned, don't try to do too many building projects at once. It'll only make you unhappy because your dudes need all the time they can get. Alright, we have 110 crates available now. That's a pretty big amount. So first things first, we're going to allocate, like, as you see here, this is a percentile meter. And we're allocating a different amount of resource here. And you can see here the numeric amount swapping. Every click is one crate. So basically what I'm going to do now is just allocating 10 crates to each of these foods and leave the rest of the, of the warehouse for now unallocated. You don't need to allocate all the crates. And I'm a big fan of allocating everything I do plan to include here and leave up a couple of crates for usage in between. For example, I know that I don't have any slot for scrolls, so I could score some scrolls in between here. And another thing that you can also or always do is use the fetch rule if you want to store something somewhere but we're going to explore that later down the road more detailed so for now we got all of that set up and now we're able to get the configurations a little bit different here so we don't need these crates anymore so we can unassign them oh livestock is one i should assign and therefore we're going to assign one crate for scrolls and I'll leave the other crates open because we can use them later for other things until the the bigger warehouse for the artisan's district is built. It's a really cool thing to have a couple of crates open for sudden jobs arising. And also get yourself at least one employee into your warehouses so your, uh, your jobs get done at a decent rate. Warehouses of this site, of this size, need employees, in my humble opinion, because otherwise, it's really hard to make sure that the transport of these goods is going accordingly. You can always see here how the workload is going to go, and you can also configure the radius of your warehouse. Also, very important because that means you can definitely tell your warehouse how long its reach should be. So basically I could configure this warehouse to only encompass all the the fields around here and ignore all the food that's being produced anywhere else. Pretty useful stuff and you can do a lot of cool things with that. I just wanted to mention it here. So I'll end this episode here because I feel like we've had a great time considering expansion, segmenting your city, and setting up a warehouse logistic in a larger term. I haven't uh, to talked about how the fetch things work in detail. I wanted to cover that. I'm going to explain it later again, but it's still a really important thing. If fetch is toggled, delivery men will fetch this resource and put it into this warehouse. This is, for example, extremely useful if you have a warehouse in the vicinity of your smelter and with this check mark, you can make sure that there's always going to be all the ore transported to this place to be refined there. This is a very powerful tool if you have several spots where the same stuff is stored at, but it's more important at this spot than at the other. Another good and direct example for this would be grain. 
the next warehouse where we're going to process that brain ad, which will be happening over here, will definitely have the fetch rule. So our grain will be fetched from this warehouse. And it's way more important that the warehouse right next to the bakery is filled with grain than it is to fill this warehouse. That's how the fetch rule works in general. Okay, so that's that. All I wanted to say for this episode. Next episode, we're going to bake some bread and smelt some steel, probably. And I'm looking forward to that. So, drop me your comments down below. It's been really cool to interact with all the stuff you had on your mind so far. And please keep going. The series is a blast for me this way. And I'd enjoy if we keep collaborating like that. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. And consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. I'd be super happy to have you. See you guys there, and have a good one. Bye-bye.